So now I have discussed four different types of angry thinking distortions. Which type sounds familiar to you? Can you put your finger on a specific self-statement that sets you off, that creates and continues without and your anger? Because this type of thinking occurs so quickly and without any prior reasoning or thinking back, they are called automatic thoughts. Getting into the habit of learning to hear my automatic thoughts, while difficult at first, is important because I can start to pay attention to specific self-statements that occur repeatedly when I am upset. Also, it can be recognized as a signal for me to start escalating my own anger. So maybe I can recognize these same words as a signal to talk to myself differently in a way to help me manage my anger instead of feeding into it. And finally, if I start to get into the habit of censoring these type of automatic negative thoughts, then I can help myself to avoid that sort of distorted thinking style. But I seem to always be trapped in and avoid using up my energy in needless anger and stress. Well, that was a mouthful. For now, I would just focus on the characteristics of automatic thoughts. One, they are private. I have learned that I talk to myself dif differently than when I talk to other people, don't we all? When I talk to other folks, I like to think that I make sense or at least discuss things in some sort of rational, logical manner. When I talk to myself, well, things get larger than life. Overgeneralized, can be irrational, can be on the emotional side, or more justified in my favor, or even horrifying. I owe that to growing up watching all the disaster, monster, and sci-fi movies. Oh, I'm a failure. Nobody loves or cares for me. It's all for nothing. The end of my life is just around the corner. Zombies and aliens are attacking. Yeah! Two, they're almost always believed. No matter how irrational those private thoughts may be, automatic thoughts can be unquestionably accepted as for real. Although I suspect those people who keep calling me with machine voice recorded sales pitches on the phone are zombies in disguise. These types of statements can be reasonable because they are hardly noticed. I don't question or challenge them. I don't try to analyze what the end results may be if I continue to accept these type of thoughts as valid. 3. They are discreet and focused on a specific message. Automatic thoughts give me a direct and specific message about a specific person or event. She does not care. 4. They normally appear in a brief statement to myself. They present themselves in short form or abbreviated in a single visual image. In my anger management groups, I hear the complaint often that a spouse always bring up the same issue or event that may have happened a long time ago to justify a negative characteristic in the significant other. That image is never forgiven, processed, and is a source of perpetual contention. A sore spot that seemingly never heals. I also find that a single word will bring up a negative past event and the anger associated with it from the past to jump to a negative conclusion on a current event. One peer I knew used to say boom as a signal for him to feel that he failed in any of her further attempts towards whatever the situation was would continue to be a failure. I suspect the word boom was a signal of sorts that implied everything was crashing down on him. Five, they are learned. I am a victim of my culture or a benefactor. Since the day I was born, my parents, teachers, friends, television, the media as a whole, government, and the list can go on, have conditioned me to put some sort of value on the prioritized events in the specific ways. Six, automatic thoughts tend to be negative and harmful to the max. One negative or depressing automatic thought can start a chain reaction a continuous negative or depressing thoughts. Many of the clients I deal with who have issues of anger or depression seem to have a streaming video in their head of non-stop angry or depressing thoughts for every occasion and turned on 24-7. Depression or anger for them becomes a lifestyle that may need to be recognized and unlearned. 7. They are hard to turn off. Ever have an issue where the same song plays in your head repeatedly and you can't seem to get rid of it? For me, it's usually commercial jingles that are pounded into my memory whether I want them there or not, thanks to aggressive or subliminal marketing. In this case, automatic thoughts slip by unnoticed and seem to come and go as they wish. 
The peer I mentioned earlier said, in a word, boom, which in this case for him had come to mean she, his wife, does not love him anymore. We're going to end up divorced. The marriage is over. How will life be without her? What about the kids? And zombies and aliens are attacking. Yeah! Okay, I threw in the zombies and aliens thing just for fun, but you already knew that. So how to become aware of these automatic thoughts? When I start a new anger management group, I give out a small notepad and encourage my clients to keep an anger diary. Nothing complicated, but just something handy to jot down what it is they are telling themselves when upset. Not recommend it for the middle of a fight or flight situation of survival. I am looking for repeated statements and or consistent themes. It's a real eye-opener to see the parallels between stressed out emotions and counterproductive thoughts. Enough to chew on for now. Next time, I will examine what to replace counterproductive thoughts with, like more rational ones, or at least be able to stand back and look at the situation objectively.